for a moment you, the artist, practicing your craft to create the ultimate story. And as a mangaka, you fine tune every detail of your story. You spend your whole life working on telling these visual stories to be like the heroes that inspired you to do this in the first place. However, when you put your masterpiece out into the world, something about it is missing. Something rings hollow. What you hoped would inspire others has not gotten the response you were looking for. And why is this happening? And that brings me to the topic of today's video on having something to say with your manga. But before we get into this video, if you don't know me, my name is Vandal. I am a self-published mangaka and author of note. My goal is to help other manga and comic book artists with their art and their writing skills to craft the story of their dreams. To really help motivate you, I've created this manga and comic book contest that's open to all creators called the Birthday Manga Bash, which is running from October 2nd to April 21st. And if you're interested in registering, just click the link down in the description below so you can enter. But now let's get into the video. Today's video might seem like a random topic, but believe me, it's not. It's a story with a deep rabbit hole that'll make you think and question, why do you even make manga in the first place? And it starts here with this manga. This is Time Paradox Ghost Rider, and many of you might know this manga and some of you might not, but this manga, I'll tell you right now, shook me to my core. First, what this manga is about, now wait, wait, hold up because I don't like to give spoilers, so just pause the video right here, go check out at least the first chapter, and then come back. I'm watching you. Make sure you go check it out if you haven't. I'm watching you. All right. Now, the story is about a mangaka who desperately wants to get in Shonen Jump. However, everything that he submits doesn't get into Jump for various reasons that we'll talk about later. My mans is pulling really hard. He's making all-nighters to make 55-page drafts for the next day just because he wants his dreams. Now, I don't recommend that you do that, but I do respect the hustle, and that just shows what kind of effort this person would put in. Anyways, let's continue. So after months of working hard towards his dreams and constantly being rejected, he's at wit's end, ready to give up. And as he yells out, a microwave goes haywire and shoots out a Shonen Jump magazine from the future. All right, I know this part's crazy, but keep, keep with me here, keep with me. So he then plagiarizes, <coughs> sorry, I mean, copies one of the manga that's in there from the future and creates it in his time and it becomes a hit however the person who actually made that manga that he plagiarized i mean <coughs> sorry i have a bad cough today i mean he copied they wonder how that their work that they made got published by someone else and this whole story takes off from there now, some of you may have this question rumbling around in your head and the idea about what does it have to do with manga and being a mangaka? And while it really has to do everything with it, this manga, for me personally, came out during the Tezuka composition for Shonen Jump. If you want to see how I went through it and that whole ordeal, you can check out that video right here. But now what spooked me really was this first chapter. And if you've read this first chapter during that time, ugh, it really messes with your head. So what really spooked me was when the main character, he goes to get his work read by the editor. And during the Shonen Jump competition, one of the things that was the highlights was that you got your manga read by like uh, Ichiro Oda, the creator of Blue Exorcist, the creator of Slam Dunk, all of these people, like really, really big people. So just put that in your head for right now. So this editor that's reading it and even wait, hold on. And even the Shonen Jump editors were reading your manga potentially. So the editor really rails into the main character and tells him how his work is empty and devoid of any meaning. And the main character tries again and he's defeated after pulling that all nighter that we just boosted him up for. And the editor just really said that he will not be in Shonen Jump and that he should really just give up on his dreams. I mean, it's pretty a Debbie Downer if you're thinking about it, but you know, sometimes you got to be honest with people and that his work is empty and he needs to try and make something that is unique, something that only he can tell the world. And that's something I really preach on this channel. Just just as a aside, I always love to see original and unique work, something that only you can say not something that has already been said so just this is just an aside i really agree with this dude 
So why was this so effective? Because during this time, I was just like the main character. That self insert stuff really does work. I was making a manga that I desperately wanted to be read and be in Shonen Jump. I wanted to create a manga that was super high quality, something that only I could tell the world that I wanted the judges of the contest to know. But I was scared because this was coming out at the same time. So I felt that the editorial department of Jump was sending a message like they were out for blood. And that was if you don't have the stuff, give up. Not exactly in those words, but you know what I mean? And I don't know if it was a coincidence. I'll never really know, but that's just something that I think that they were trying to say at that time. It was really like fourth wall breaking. Like you had to be there and in it to really understand what it felt like for this, this message to be sent to you. So like the manga was sending you a message and while you were operating as the character of the story, it's just fascinating how that could work in just only that time period. Anyways, that made me think so much during this time that when you make manga, I think that it needs to have a message. It needs to say something. So in my creation of my manga note that you can check out right here, just link down below if you want to support the channel, you know, just add hashtag ad for me. Okay, that's enough, right? Okay, so I did just that and it worked, you know, to tell that story to the world. Now, if it was successful, that's going to be up to the readers. I'm not sure, but I think I did a great job. Often I find that I read people's stories and you know, I really question and grind into what their story is about. And you know, I, at the end of it all, I ask my question like, what do you want to tell with your story? What do you want to say? And funny enough, I get answers that are like the main characters from Time Paradox. And people will say, you know, I want to make things that people enjoy. Or maybe my story doesn't really have a meaning. Or maybe even just this story that may have been told already, it's just I put a little spin on it and I'm telling it my way. There are a bunch of things that are often said to me in the defense of the absence of the meaning of the story, but I seldom get the answer about what they're trying to do or what they're trying to say with their story. And if I do, there isn't too much thought put into that. Now that brings up an interesting question. Should you even create meaning inside of your manga? Often you'll hear and I'll hear that art should be expressive. And you know what? I agree with that. Not everything you make should have meaning and you know, creativity and making art should just be fun. I think that's a fair thing that we can agree with. I don't think your whole body of work also should be seriously thought through and hard brained ideas and philosophies about the meaning of life. However, just like many things in life, there should be a balance and sometimes actual thought put into what you make because when you put thought into what you make, those people will receive the intention that you're trying to put out into the world. Let's take fight scenes for example. We all love action. It catches our eye. We love and enjoy seeing characters engage in battle. I know I love drawing action scenes. I'll tell you that right now. They are my favorite. However, if that's all there is and there's no build up or even look at the characters about why they're in this situation, then why should I really care about those fights? And a big culprit of this, and I'm not going to say any names, a story to my knowledge that is one tournament arc and a bunch of fights. If there was anything of substance in this medium that I will not name, those fights aren't even that good. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I got sidetracked. I really don't like any of these shows that have these names in them. Uh, that's another story for another day. Now that I'm back to my normal self, I would really say that a healthy mix of fun and focus will get your manga having some of that meaning and a good amount of balance. But I think the most thing that's important here that we're really not talking about is the why. Why should you create meaning in your story? Well, let's go all the way back. Stories are as old as time and they were used as a vehicle to teach someone about something. It could be about anything, but instead of just like saying exactly what the meaning of the story is, people are more likely to remember a story of what someone went through and what they learned than directly just saying something like you should not eat junk food, for example. 
Maybe someone went through a journey trying to figure out what it meant that they ate junk food. I don't know why I'm talking about junk food. Okay, I'm hungry. Today we see a lot of stories created for entertainment, and that's the purpose of stories. They're made to entertain you so you can learn something. However, there's meaning in them, but most people look to be entertained. Thus, the spectacle, the flashy effects, the fight scenes. The story will be obscured, the most important part of what we're trying to say sometimes, or what you might even lose sight of when you're trying to, you know, say as a creator, getting lost in that spectacle of those fight scenes we talked about earlier, if you're trying to even say anything at all. Now, the most important part is the why. Ask yourself, why are you writing this manga or comic book that you're making? Because none of this is actually easy. It can be fun and you probably enjoy doing this, but why? Take a moment to think about your story, think about your art, whatever it is, but really think about why am I doing this? And also, why does it matter? Okay, so hopefully you probably might have some idea and if you want, you can put that down in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear why you're creating your story and why you think that matters. Now that you might have an idea and also just note that it's okay that you might not have it at this point because the purpose of your story is to tell your truth, something that you know about the world that the world doesn't know yet or has yet to be seen through your lens that can possibly change the way they view it. And that's what your story is here to do. For me personally, I made note for many reasons, but one of the things that I was trying to do is help people as well as myself to work through their own selfishness that even though when you help someone, you might be too late or not helping them in the way that they need or just taking a self-reflective look at how you yourself can do better before you became the thing that you initially did not want to become. Now, if you've made it this far into the video and you're unsure of how to create meaning, let's get into how to actually create meaning with your story. And it really starts with this one word, theme. What is theme? Now, let's look at the definition of theme. It is basically a subject or topic of discourse or of artistic representation, as well as a specific and distinctive quality, characteristic or concern. That basically comes down to, you know what, your truth. When you strip down the events of your stories, the plot lines, the visuals, what is your story trying to say at the heart of it all? Now take a look at this screen. I think most of you know these shows. So pause the video here and I want you to use what we just talked about, the definition of theme, and put in the comments, what is the strongest theme in each of these stories when you think about them? So I picked Shonen, all of which are really widely popular shows that even there are things that are aimed at kids do have levels to them. And you know, you seek to say something with this. And even if they may take forever to get there, and this is another thing to note, that a long running shonen might not reveal themselves or their theme early on, it may take some time for them to find it or for that theme to become apparent. However, even if it takes time to show you as the author should actually know this about your story, you should at least have an idea of what you're trying to say. And if you don't already know what you're trying to say with your story, have a rough idea. Because what this will do is make things way easier when writing because you'll be able to weave in that same theme throughout your whole story and all of the arcs that'll derive from that theme idea. And before we get into each of these series and my takes on what I think the themes are in them, I want to say that theme is subjective. People can get different messages from the same piece of art. So what I want to say next is what I got and what I think that many other people got as well. So the overarching theme. My opinion on what the theme is is my own and might differ from yours and I am not a financial advisor. I don't I just wanted to say that sorry y'all. But my idea is different from what you might think but if it is different from what you put earlier you know just put that in the comment section if you haven't already so let's take a look at naruto i think there are many themes but one of the strongest ones that i find is that violence begets more violence and the circle of hatred can only be broken by someone who has dealt with a world that has shown them nothing but hate to truly understand that to bring peace 
but through kindness and words of others that have changed him from someone who could have just continued that cycle to someone who actively fought to break it. Even though Talk No Jutsu is a meme and kind of made fun of, I really think that it goes well with the theming of this story. Peace really can come when you talk through your issues and come to understand the other side and work through to find solutions. It's everywhere in this show. I could go on and on, but we have more stories to look at. One Piece is the next one, and here it's, I think, a really simple theme here that is really to attain your dreams, you need to be free. Looking at all of the Straw Hats, they do have their sort of liberator type Robin Hood-esque thing going to these different islands and they go there and they stop someone from taking away someone else's freedom and allowing those people to live their lives the way they want. And it's made stronger by the fact that each straw hat has a dream and a really tragic backstory, but also the crew works to make sure that that doesn't help to anyone else, that they don't lose a sense of freedom and that their freedom is also not lost. So you can see that in each arc, how the theme of freedom manifests in many different ways, freedom of people, freedom to do what you want, be who you are. There's so many things, but freedom manifests and it's so powerful. Probably why One Piece is so popular in such a long running series. Can you really just boil down freedom into 30 chapters? Maybe, let me see, try it. So Full Metal Alchemist is one of my favorite manga and anime, and I think it's a complex idea here, and there are many themes, but at the heart of the theme is that to get something, first you have to give up something, and that is demonstrated beautifully with the brothers' first act, thinking that they have something that is actually worth a human soul. And they spend their whole story trying to figure out how to get their bodies back that they lost and learning a lot from others and hard lessons that they learned and how they can give back through what they've learned and learn that there's actually nothing that's really worth a human soul. There's so much more uh, here, but uh, it really goes deep, but I'm just gonna leave it at that. Now that we've went over all of these popular shonens and what their themes were and what I think their ideas are, how do you actually create a theme? Well, that's what your story is for. Now, one thing about the theme that some writers might not understand or get confused is that you don't need to be so heavy handed with it. If done well, your message should have gotten across effectively because it doesn't need to be surface level for it to be impactful. And I think that's what's so appealing about manga is the subtle ways that it presents those themes and really can get you to think about what's being said. So when you're thinking about what your theme is, think about what is the truth you want to say? Think about these two things. Why is that truth important to you? And why should that truth be important to the reader? Once you get through that phase, you're well on your way to figuring out what your theme is. And you can check really in depth on my video about how to start your manga. It'll give you everything you need to know to get started on that topic of theming and finding out how you can do that in your story. So to give you guys like a quick TLDW, too long didn't watch have your story you know you create be about a character that's the opposite of your truth that you're trying to tell then have that lie that they believed in the beginning of the story become a part of their character perhaps they believe that they should save themselves before saving others then have the story be about the journey and discovery that leads to whatever revelation you want it to be Maybe they find out that they could do things differently. Maybe they're wrong about what they previously thought, or maybe they're even right. It could be a twist. But at the end, there should be some form of change and realization of your character. And you can explore all of these facets, where it originated from, and how these themes show up in different places throughout your story. Okay, so I think what I'm trying to say here is that each time we create a story or a manga or a comic book, as an artist, we have a chance to really change someone's worldview. I know I may get preachy, I hope I'm not honestly, but I really want to see new stories that have something to them that no one else has in the world, something that makes them special, something that resonates with a wide audience or even myself. Whoever it's intended for, I want that story to reach them, and that's why I made this video. That is it right there. Make sure that you have that in mind when you want to have something to say about your manga, to shout it out to the world so you can help us all 
to save us from the impending doom of apocalypse. Because, you know, that's what stories are after all. A way to help each other learn. <laughs> But yeah, guys, I think that's all I have for today. What do you think about the idea of theming in your story? Should you really think about it? Should you not? Is it pretentious or something that you could look at with a little bit more seriousness? Let me know again in the comment section down below. But if you enjoyed the video, don't hesitate to hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and hit that bell for notifications when you want to hear things that I have to say. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace! Boy. But yeah, really think about theming because theming is this stuff and you want to make sure that you're on theme because theme is important. And all right, that's enough rambling. Bye.